morning, everyone. How's everybody doing? The first Sunday of Advent. So exciting. Good to have you here. A um, couple of announcements. We've got a lot of things coming up. But first, for families that have elementary kids, we've got these nice little nativity boxes that Pastor Bree has prepared for you. So if you would stop at the Welcome Center after service and get your little family box, um, that would be great. Again, uh, families with elementary school kids. Uh, let's see. We've got lots of things going on. I think there's a youth event tonight. Is that right? I know I saw that on here, but is it gone already? I'm going to let you talk about that. There's, I know there's a youth event tonight. Everybody meet here, consumed youth at, oh yeah, here it is. Back to Bethlehem, drive through nativity tonight. Consumed youth, you're meeting at 5 p.m. You're going to have dinner and then leave the church at 5.30 to travel to Putnamville for that event. It's uh, Putnamville Baptist. So that should be a lot of fun. So youth... You want to meet here tonight at 5 o'clock for that. Senior Saints is coming up this week, December 7th at 2 p.m. And you guys are having a white elephant gift exchange, so make sure you bring your gift. Seniors, please mark your calendar so you don't miss that. They always have a good time. And we've got Gingerbread Bash coming up on Saturday, December 16th at 10 a.m. For all the um, First Church families and friends, you're going to each get to make a gingerbread nativity scene. And then there will be snacks and hot chocolate and so forth. So mark your calendars for that, 10 a.m. on that Saturday. Ladies, we've got a uh, Christmas event coming up, a holiday concert on December 17th. I know it's right before the holidays, but let's face it, ladies, you all need a break. So uh, we'll be serving you lunch immediately following the service on the 17th. And then we are going to go to Rose Holman. They have their Christmas program that afternoon at 1.30, and um, the public is invited to come. I don't know how busy it gets, but we are going to try and make it. Um, so we'll have lunch right after the service. We'll leave here at 1245 and head to Rose Holman for the concert. So please sign up so we know how many people uh, we can expect for lunch. And if you want to just come for lunch and you don't have any interest in going to the concert, that's fine too. Um, hope you'll be there. And I think, I think that's all the events. Yeah, did I miss anything? I don't think so. Hey. Happy Advent, everybody. Hey, good morning. Turn to your neighbor and say good morning. Or holler out at somebody. Anybody over here need to say good morning to somebody over there? Good. How about over there to here? That's good. Oh, super. Hey, it's time for Sermon in the Sack. Kiddos, come on up here. We do that. Come on up. Come on up. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Everybody doing good? Keep it coming, come on. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. All right. Good deal, good deal. Good to see you kiddos. I know we got some kiddos that are sick. Oh man, a lot of, lot of, lot of snu stuffy noses. I know, stuffy noses. Well, it's good to see you all. Excellent, excellent. Hey, Becky, you can... Hey, Becky. You can just fade that out. That's good. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Excellent. Well, good to see you, kiddos. Is it Christmas time? Is it Christmas time? It is that time. Yeah. And it's going to be fun, isn't it? Is it going to be fun at Christmas time? We'll take that as a yes. And uh, anybody else? You, you really excited for Christmas time? Well, why? I don't know. Okay. What? I'm excited because I'm getting a futon. You're going to get a what? I'm going to get a futon. A futon? Is that legal? I don't know. <laughs> All right. I know what a futon is. It's, it's like a couch bed, right? It's, ah, I'm just messing with Oh, you got something? My birthday. Oh, yeah. Got to love it. So you're excited for Christmas? Not. <laughs> why aren't you excited? Can tell me one good thing that's going to happen for Christmas. Nothing. That's, oh, come on. <laughs> well, we're, we're going to hope that it's good. But you got the sack, don't you? Did you pick it out by yourself? No. Oh, Okay. Well, let's pray, and we'll, we'll trust that whatever's in that sack is going to teach us something, okay? Does that sound good? All right. Lord, thank you for these kids. Thank you for a chance, Lord, to 
be together today in your house. The first Sunday of Advent, we are on the journey again, Lord, heading toward the celebration of your birth. Bless this time. Help us, Lord, to learn from something that's in this sec. And we pray in your name. And everybody said amen. Amen. Are you taking a nap over here? All right. There we go. There we go. All right. Oh, it's kind of heavy for a little sec. Was that the sound from the sack? All right, what, is this safe? I don't know why we got uh, the feedback here. Oh, oh, yes, here we go. All right, you gotta help me out. Let everybody know what this is, what is this? It's a seashell. It's a she shell, she sea shell? Well, tell me again. Seashell. Uh, okay, seashell, very good. Very good, well, well, and, and where, I mean, it's a seashell, where did it come from? The sea. The sea. We're on a roll. It, so it came from the sea. So what was in it before it, you got it? I don't know. Oh. Hmm. Anybody got an idea? Was there anything in this seashell before we got it here? What do we got? Probably a snail. A snail. A snail. Maybe. Anybody else? What 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 might have been in this thing? What, what, what do you got? Crab. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Possibly. Um, was, was there? Could it, could there have been a pearl in this thing? It could. Oh man! Because if there was a pearl in this, would anybody want the pearl? Why would we want the pearl if there was a pearl in this? Why? Because it's valuable. Valuable. Oh, yes. We're on the clock here. You, you all, yeah, little waves, waves back there. Excellent. We're all together now. We're continuing. We're, oh, I thought we were done. Right. Just say hi. Good. All right. That's enough. <laughs> enough. All right. All right. That's good. That's good. That's good. All right. So we would want the pearl. We would want the pearl that was in this thing because it had value. Let me tell you something. You ready? If there would have been a pearl in this, this the pearl would have come about because there would have been a little grain of sand that got lodged inside that thing. Yes. And by, by it being shoved down in this thing, it would be for the clam an irritant, something that would be, that would be really disturbing. I know it's so amazing and and because it was stuck down in there it couldn't get it out itself but because it was in there there's something about the clam hang with me there's something about the clam <laughs> young and old alike run out while I'm talking all right <laughs> You know it's true. We've got to pray for larger bladders around here. Anyway, so the irritant, this is what happened. The clam, it has, God has given it something that when an irritant gets inside of it, it begins to coat it with something so that... God has something for you that when something comes into your life God has something that he can do for you and me that changes everything that irritant for us in this world we'll call it sin all right it messes with us it causes pain with us but because God's love is so great God sent Jesus Oh my, to cover our sin. And when God gets a hold of it through his son, 
man, oh man, when, when God has provided this that coats this irritant, the, the grain of sand inside of this clam, and it gets coated, it becomes this pearl. I want you to listen to this, kiddos, and these people out here too. When God does something, when he changes everything, when God does something and he changes everything, he creates something that is great in value. He wants to do that for you kiddos. He wants to do that for everybody. <laughs> what sin is, God changes it by the covering that his son can do in our lives and transforms it. Oh my, that's so good. A seashell. Oh, I tell you, love seashells. Love, for where, well, love where they came from, but love what this probably had inside of it at one point. Something of great value, as well as you and everyone else. Great value because of what God can do. Amen? Amen. All right. Hey, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, so much. This is, this is a reminder we all need today, every one of us, young and old alike. Help us, God, to know that you can do incredible miracles with something that seems to be insignificant and even painful. You can transform. Lord, may that be the case. We pray it in your name. Amen. 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 All right, kiddos, stand up, would you? Go back to your seats. Let's give them a round of applause again. That was good. That was good. That was a good lesson. I would say, though, however, pastor, though God has made me into something of great value, some would say I'm still an irritant. <laughs> we all have work to do. <laughs> that was good. That was so good. It's good to be here with you all this morning as we enter into this Advent season. I hope you've already begun to prepare your, your hearts and your minds for the coming of our Savior, the one who would come and change everything for you and for me. What a special season it is. I'm so glad we get to celebrate Advent together. As we prepare our hearts to worship the Lord this morning, let's give back to him with our tithes and our offerings. Let's go to prayer this morning and ask him to bless this time for us. Oh Lord, it really is a blessing to be in your house this morning. Lord, it's so good for us to gather together with one another in this place with one purpose, which is to worship you in this place today. Oh God, you're so worthy of our worship. You're so worthy of our praise. You've been so, so good to us. And as we begin this season of Advent, Lord, we, we begin to prepare our hearts for your coming. Lord, you changed it all for us. We were once dead and stuck in our trespasses and you said, I'm gonna send my only son. They can't do it on their own. So let me help. And as Denny said this morning in prayer, in that moment, Lord, you tore apart the heavens to send us the one who could change it all. Oh God, you're so good. And Lord, we come to worship you in this place today. Lord, would you, would you come and be a part this morning? Lord, would you help us to, to lift up your name in this place? Put it where it belongs, Lord, high and lift it up. 
And Lord, as we begin our time of worship, we bring before you our tithes and our offerings. Lord, we ask for your help and that you will help us to use these as you would see fit to further your kingdom here in this earth, on this earth. While we wait for you to come again, we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Those plates are here in the front. Won't you please come this morning? Let's take a couple moments here. Let's greet one another. Tell somebody you're happy to see them here this morning. Sunday of Advent, ex expectation of hope. Jeremiah 33, 14 to 16 says, The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the good promise I made to the people of Israel and Judah. In those days and at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. He will do what is just and right in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called, the Lord, our righteous Savior. Today we light the candle of expectation and hope. May it remind each and every one of us of God's great promise to us. He is our hope, he is our redeemer, and he is the savior. Father, Father, during Advent we season, we may, may be reminded, reminded of your promises, promises to us, us in and your fulfillment of them. them. Help, Help us to prepare our lives for his Advent within us. us. In, in the, the precious name, name of Jesus, Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Would you stand with us this morning as we continue to worship? You know, the Lord, I hope that he, as this Advent season starts, 
opens my eyes so that I may see what he has for me today. I hope that he opens my ears so that I may hear his voice and that I may be attentive today in every way for what he has for me today. Let's worship him today. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive a King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing. Oh. 
forevermore and he shall reign forevermore forevermore and he shall reign forevermore forevermore unto us a child is born the king of kings and lord of lords and he shall reign forevermore, forevermore. He shall reign. He shall reign. He shall reign. Give God praise. He deserves it. Forevermore. Forevermore. Sister, won't you come on down? We're going to pray for you this morning. Pray for uh, God to touch, touch your loved one. Yeah, come on down. If you want to just sit right here in the front pew, that'd be great. You know, one thing that we have to come to grips with is that what God has done for us is eternal. It is forever. I don't know if you're able to have some sense of that today, but there is need for each one of us to know that what God has done and continues to do because of Jesus, it is eternal. It's not temporary. It's not Everything else, everything else is temporary, but what God has done through Jesus is eternal. Amen. I want you to hear this. This is something that really, really quite fresh for me. I shared it this morning before prayer, as Pastor Mike alluded to. This is the prophet Isaiah, before we pray. The prophet Isaiah. And he's praying. He's calling out to God for something. Listen to this. Oh, that you would burst from heaven and come down. Uh, the, the word used in many other translations is rend. I had to look the definition of rend up to really understand. Rend means to tear in two, to separate, to divide, to open up. So here is Isaiah saying, oh God, would you please open up heaven? Would, would you please rip it apart? We, there's something of great need here, and we know that only you can do something about it. Are you with me? Imagine that. Isaiah, a, a man of God, but a man realizing there is, there is something that needs attention and only God can do something about it. But something has to happen so significant that, that heaven itself has to be torn apart so God can come down. How the mountains would quake if you would do such a thing in your presence. As fire causes wood to burn, water to boil, your coming would make the nations tremble. Then your enemies would learn the reason for your fame. Hmm. When you come down, came down long ago, you did awesome deeds beyond our highest expectations. And oh, how the mountains quake. Listen, for since the world began, no ear has heard and no eye has seen a God like you who works for those who wait for him. I don't know where you are exactly, but there is need for us to find ourselves in some respect with old Isaiah. Oh God, would you rend the heavens? Would you open them wide? Would you separate the heaven and come down? We need you. We need you. 
and make it so personal. Oh God, would you open up the heavens for me? Would, would you rend the heavens for me? I need you to come down. God, help us, each one of us, to see ourselves in that great of need for God to come. This is all, this is what Advent is all about. This is why every time this year we begin this journey fresh because we need a fresh realization and revelation that we need God to come down to us. We can't get to him. And my, he always does come, doesn't he? He always comes. He always comes to us. He always opens up. Opens up his realm to come. And he wants to do that for each one of us again. He does. Stand with me as we pray today, would you? If you're not standing, come on, stand. We have to stand in honor of God and his, his holiness and his majesty. Let's gather around our sister here too. Praying for a, a, a mother-in-law of one of her boys. Stephen's mother-in-law. Kathy Price. All right. She's got leukemia, mm. and she's in the ICU yes. at a hospital in Indianapolis. Mm. Well, we believe for God to come down and touch. Amen? Well, let's bow our heads, and let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you so much on this first Sunday of Advent morning. Thank you, God, that we can call upon you for anything at any time. Thank you, God. You, you are so present and so real, and you are so responsive. And it's not just a matter of us asking for you to do something that we want you to do. We, Lord, call upon you for your will to be done so that you are glorified. That's what we, that's what we make the appeal to you for. That's why we ask, God, that you would open up the heavens because we know if you will do what you can do, you will receive glory and people will be shaken and, and the, the whole earth, which is your creation, will know, know your presence in a fresh and new way. So we pray, we pray for this one, Lord, that is going through cancer. And Lord, here is, here is her, her sister in the faith. She is representing her, Lord. We're believing in the power of God. We're believing in the power of God. We're believing in the power of God today. There, there is no greater power than the power of Almighty God. And we're believing, Lord, that you will touch and you will make whole and new for your glory, Lord. We pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Praise your name. Thank you, Lord. We continue in prayer. There is such great need. There is, there is nothing, Lord, new under heaven. There's not. There's always been and always will be until you come, Jesus. There will be the great need of your presence in our lives, in our homes, in your church, in our communities, in this nation. Oh, God, in, in this world that you have made and so much has been done in this world that is so absent of you. Oh, God, we need you. So on this Sunday that, that, is, that, is, that is signified by the, the incredible word of hope. And it's not just a word and it's not even just a name. It is something of great significance in response of you, God, to us as your sons and daughters, to all of humanity. That there was no hope. No hope outside of God. And because you, God, loved us so much, you sent, you sent hope himself. And here we are today, celebrating one more time, looking forward to the birth one more time. Lord, wanting to be more like the one you sent again. Oh, God, I pray that each one of us will be so stirred in a fresh way. We need that God more than we, any of us understand. Oh God, help there not to be, help there not to be a, a spiritual lethargy in, in people. Oh God, help people to not become so comfortable or so passive or, or Lord, or even so reflective that they miss what you want to do right now in their lives and in the future. Oh God, there's, there's way too much looking back 
There's got to be a looking forward to you, God. There's got to be some hope beyond what we've known in the past and even know right now. We've got to keep looking forward to you. Oh, how, much, how we must grieve your heart, God, when we don't keep pursuing you and keep moving forward with you. Oh, God, may, that be a, may there be a change in all of our hearts and lives in this day for this advent. Oh, may help us, God, to understand what, what the question is all about. Christmas, do you believe? Do we really believe? Oh, oh God, help us. Help us to focus on you in a fresh and new way in this Advent 2023. We praise you. We honor you. Oh, again, we celebrate you forevermore, forevermore. You are eternal. Your reign is eternal. And, oh, God, we want to exalt our matchless king today. In your precious name we pray. And everyone said, amen, amen. Say what? Why don't we give the Lord a praise offering? Can we do that? Oh, he deserves that. He certainly deserves that. Amen. We're going to fire up this candle one more time. Oh, it works so well. Oh, my. Oh, it's a... Oh. Oh, stop, stop your O oh, and we're, we're going to do it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm, a, I'm a pyro from way back. <laughs> well, you all sat down so quick. Are you all tired out or something? Stand back. We've got to honor God's word. Come on now. He deserves it. Unless you've got a word that's better than his. I, I, nobody does. We're going to honor God's word. Here we go on this first Sunday of Advent. All right. Luke says this, and read it with me. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Oh, Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Whew. Confused and disturbed, as we all would be, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. My goodness. Isn't that good? Christmas, do you believe? Do you believe in hope? Lord, we do Ask for your guidance, your guidance and your understanding. Help us to know what our answer really is. And Lord, help our lives. Oh, help our lives to emulate what we say we believe. Oh, that we really do believe in hope. In your precious name. And everyone said amen. 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 You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh my, Christmas, do you believe? Do you really believe? Is it something that you really believe in or, or is it something you've just got, kind of got swept up into the ritual or, or, or the habit of or, or the tradition of? Or if it's just something that, that you, you think is just a good thing to involve yourself in. Do we believe in this what is called Christmas. And one thing, I'm sure, I'm sure you've seen it uh, written this way or wrote this way before, uh, the term Christmas, is that Christ is capitalized and M-A-S is lowercase. That, that's really what it's all about is we've, we've placed the significance on Christ and mass is to worship him. So we want to make sure that, that Christ is always what is so large and so magnanimous and, and so, so, so mag magnified. We want to make sure that Christ is what we see first, what we focus on first, because, because there are so many other things. If Christ isn't what we're focusing on first, other things will get our focus. Amen? Amen? Amen. All right. 
So here we go. A few more questions. Number one's this. Do I believe? And this is, this is introspective. I'm asking myself. You're asking yourself. Do I believe there is hope for everyone? Do I believe there is hope for everyone? Not just a select few. Not just certain people that fall into a particular category. Do I really believe that everyone can have hope? Do I? So watch this. John 1, John 1, verse 46, says this. Nazareth exclaimed, Nathaniel, can anything good come from Nazareth? <laughs> come and see yourself, Philip replied. It's a question of great significance on this very first Sunday of Advent because, because Mary, the mother of Jesus, came from where? Came from where? Somebody's calling somebody to tell them right now where Mary came from. Technology's great. Mary came from Nazareth. Nathaniel was asking the question, can anything good come from over there? Can anything good come from that side of the tracks? You know, there's certain areas and streets and neighborhoods and every community that people label as, oh, <laughs> nothing good comes from there nothing good goes on over there oh be careful if you go over there don't get caught over there after dark be careful not to make a wrong turn or you end up in so and so nothing good ever happens over there that was Nazareth that's where the mother of Jesus came from. So how in the world, you got to get this. We all got to get this. How in the world can something so incredibly significant and wonderful come from where it was deemed nothing good could come from there? And if you came from there, you were given the label as nothing good will ever happen with you. Nothing good will happen with your life. You're a lost cause. Just forget it. Won't matter how much effort you put forth. Nothing good's going to come from your life think about it and Mary is she's definitely exalted she, she is lifted high she is the favored woman God found favor with her he was so pleased with her so it must not, hear me, it must not matter to God where someone comes from. What matters to God is how, how in tune someone is with him. <clears throat> Are you with me? It must not matter how you dress. It must not matter your, your, your reputation that you, you might have. If you have found your relationship with God and you are you're living in full devotion to Him, that's when God takes notice and it doesn't matter what town you were born in or what side of the tracks you come from. It doesn't matter what you've done in your past. If you're happy about that, say amen. Every one of us have done enough in our past, enough or enough doing stuff in the, in the present right now, that I tell you what, the word will say, forget it, it's all over for you. No hope for you. Mary, the 
mother of Jesus from Nazareth? What was God thinking? I might be alone by myself with this, but I've asked God a time or two, God, what in the world were you thinking? Anybody else? Just be honest. Have you said, God, what were you thinking? Ain't nobody wanting to answer. One person raising their hand. I tell you what. Uh, yeah. we, we know, Becky, don't we? We got, we got people. Oh, everybody here has asked that question. Because things happen in our life and we wonder, what in the world? Why in the world? Isn't there another way? Couldn't there have been another direction? Couldn't there have been some other way this could have happened? <laughs> but again, it's not dependent upon what we think is rational, what we think is relevant what we might even deem to be culturally significant. No. Nah. What matters to God is someone's heart that has fallen in love with him and is willing to live their life in full and complete devotion, obedient to him. No excuses. I mean, she know, Mary knew where she came. She knew she came from the hood. She knew she came from that side of the track. She knew where she came from, but that did not stop her from pursuing the God that created her and saying, I'm going to live for you. And, and, and within her days of living, that she devoted herself to God. So it wasn't circumstantial. Was it. it wasn't based upon certain things happening or not in her life. She was determined to live for God. And God found favor with her because of that. <clears throat> so much so that God said, you're the one that I want to give birth to my one and only son. Of all the women, of all the virtuous women, something about Mary was extraordinary. Extraordinary. Now, let me take just a pause here. This isn't just a message for women. This is for every single one of us that we would find ourselves transparently and honestly right there face to face with with the proverbial god mirror and we see ourselves are we fully devoted are we completely yielded over are we obeying are we hinging everything about our life our existence even our religiosity and trying to Help ourselves feel as good as we can without fully yielding over word, thought, and deed to God. So again, God saw not just something special in Mary. I mean, God looks upon his creation. He sees that everyone, he sees us with his perfect eyes. We are special to him. We are so special to him. And, and he doesn't look like, wow, well, I, I wish I, I kind of, I wish I would have tweaked him or her a little bit. No, no. He made each of us significantly and totally perfect for him. That's when, you know, asking that question, have you asked, ever asked God why? Because typically we'll ask God why when we see somebody that has, a, has ability or material goods, etc. <coughs> that we would like. And here's a cool thing about this this relationship that God and Mary had, she had so much hope 
And it wasn't just a byproduct. She was filled with hope. She functioned with hope. She was embodied by hope. That's what God wants to give to every single person is this embodiment. He wants to fill people with himself, himself who is hope. So once someone is filled with God, that, that means that person is filled with hope that they cannot find anywhere else but him. And again... It's not a byproduct. It's not something that's, that just stands alone. No, once we have him, once he has been given the openness, let me go back to the rend heaven, we as individuals need to rend our hearts. Our hearts need to be torn into, spiritually speaking. To be opened wide so that, so that God himself can inhabit us and fill us so that there is this hope that takes up residence in us to the point that it's not just filling us, it's overflowing out of us. Mary got the Father's attention. Read this with me. It's Romans. Ready? Read it with me. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Stop there. Don't run past that too quickly. There's something so significant about the way that we think Paul, used by God to convey that message, is significant so much so that the latter part follows it. Here we go. Then you will learn to know God's will for you. Something about the way we think, if it's not a thinking that honors God, we will miss God's will. If we're always thinking about, man, this is where it's really tough. If we're always thinking about ourselves, but we work really hard as we think about ourselves to not think that it's us thinking about ourselves. <laughs> Where we think about ourselves so much to satisfy ourselves, to appease ourselves, to bless ourselves we seem to rally others around us so that we don't consider that this is the wrong thinking. And when we're thinking about us so much, then God's will becomes less and less and less of importance for us. good number of you know I, I hit another number yesterday double nickels 55 being 55 means that where I'm at today it's not my first rodeo and it's not my second one I've been engaged in many rodeos of life the ups and downs, the, the difficulties, the, the, the prevailing, you know, the, the, if you, using the, the rodeo, I, I, I've, I've been on the bull, man, and it, it, it bucks hard, that, that's, that's life, and my, all you got to do is stay on for eight seconds, my, if that would be the case for us in life, wouldn't it be nice? Every difficulty, every struggle, it would, would it be, if we would just hang on for eight seconds, whoo, cowboy up. Move on to the next one, you know. Climb up in the chute. Maybe that's why I wear boots so much. Hmm. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. If you and I are engaged 
with abandonment to ourselves, in full denial of ourselves, taking up our cross, denying ourselves, then the way that we will be living life, it's God living through us, our lives will exemplify goodness and pleasing and perfection to God. Not the world. There, there is hardly anything that the world would deem good, pleasing, perfect when it comes to someone who has fully devoted themselves to obeying God. Most of the time, even more so these days than ever, it's deemed stupidity or it's deemed bigotry. Just, it's deemed craziness by the world. But something has to be transformed in us to change the way that we think. What goes on up in here? Because what goes on up in here dictates what we do with the rest of our lives. It's true. If you're, th if you're thinking thoughts of woe is me so much, your life will be a woe is me life. If you're thinking so much about needing certain things, those things become the most prominent in your life, whether it's, whether it's at home, with your family, in the church, when it comes to what happens within the, the ministries of the church. We begin to think so much about what we think, it just squeezes out the opportunity for God to help us and lead us in and through his will for us because we are caught in this vein I want it the way I want it are you with me it's the struggle that we find ourselves that we come into with advent hey, mom, mom read something to me uh, maybe it was yesterday and it, it, it showed, it was, it was this visual of the darkness. So this darkness is what, is what God knew he must enter into. And it was so significant that only one thing would change what was going on. He had to rend heaven. He had to send his precious one and only son. There was no other way. And that son of his, spotless, pure, completely good, completely pleasing to the father, had to give his life completely so that people who wanted to honor God with their life would have the example that they needed to follow so that God's will would be able to be done. As, um, as ordinary as Mary would have been deemed, as insignificant as Mary would have been defined, as ordinary as you and I would be deemed, as, as insignificant from some that we would be defined in this world today, if we will align ourselves with the creator that made you and me, knitted us together, if we do that, God will see us not for what we have lived, not for the set of tracks we were born on, not, not, not for the family name that we might have, because you know how that goes. You're who? Are you connected to so-and-so? Oh. You know. A lot of you uh, Terre Haudians, I don't know if that's the way you call yourself or not. I'm a, I'm a part of you. Because you, you've been here long enough. If you've been here most of your life, you know certain family names. You do. But if God... If God is hope, he sees each person as 
the one he created, and it matters nothing to him, not one thing to him. God says, I can give hope and meaning and significance to every person. And that should help us to celebrate beyond anything today. Second question is this, do I believe there is nothing impossible when it comes to God? So if, if there is something of great significance that we have been made for and God wants to do something with our lives of something of, of extraordinary level, do I believe not only that there is hope for everyone, do I believe, do I really believe that with God nothing is impossible? Anybody here ever got to a place where you made a certain choice in your life so much so you you begin to have a feeling I'm done. I, I've 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 gone too far now. I've sinned too many times now. You online, I, I've 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 lived a. a Away from God so long now, I can't, I can't, I can't, I just can't believe that he would love me. You got to know that people are out there in the world that, that feel that, believe that, believe that kind of thinking. The thinking that, that some may have here many have out there, it has to change. Something has to change so that the thought isn't, there's no hope for me. It's impossible for God to do anything in my life or with my life. No possible way that we begin to believe and help people to believe there is hope for them because there's hope for everybody. And with God, Every person has possibility. Nothing is impossible with God. Nothing. And individuals, people, with, with God, people are not impossible to him. As much as we might journey this side of heaven with, with people and dealing with things and issues and all those kinds of struggles, and we might say, oh, I just don't know. Whew. With God, there's always possibility. Think about this with Mary. The young girl... A young, very young teenage girl, minding her own business. Wait a minute, there's a pause moment. Hang on. Mary, being a young teenage girl, there's no way possible she had the experience of a 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 year old person. Right? Right? So we can say, God doesn't look at us based upon our experience, our knowledge, our wisdom, or all these abilities and talents. No, it's all about the heart. So here is Mary, minding her own business, and God shows up, doing her daily duties and, and chores in life. And God shows up. Which means you and I must be ready at all times for God to show up. God is always present, but he's ready to respond to our obedience to him. Amen? So watch this. Hebrews 13. Again, read it with me. Now may the God of peace... Read with me. Who brought up from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, and ratified an eternal covenant with his blood. Mm. May he equip you with all you need for doing his will. May he produce in you, through the power of Jesus Christ, every good thing that is pleasing to him, all glory to him forever and ever. Amen. Do you and I really believe that it's possible with God that everything about our lives can be pleasing to him? 
Do we? I know this is a tough one, and nobody wants to be the first one to answer yes or no. But do we really believe? If we believe anything at all is possible with God, which means nothing is impossible with God, do we believe that God can take over our lives and from our lives it will all be good and pleasing to him? We've got to believe that because if we don't, we have nothing, nothing to aspire to, nothing to desire, nothing to hunger. If we don't think and believe that God can do anything in us and with us, that it will be honorable and glorifying to him, we might as well just stop and go home. If we want to sit here, if we want to sit where you're at online, if we want to just sit here and say, I think I'm as good as I'm going to get. What a sad existence and what a sad testimony that would be of God and his, his infinite Ability to do the impossible. We've got to believe with all hope that where we are right now, God wants to keep moving us closer and closer and closer to him. He wants us to become more like the one that he sent as Savior. He wants us to become more like Jesus. So for us, we, we've got to say, no, no, this is not as good as it gets. No, 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 I, I'm not as good as I'm going to get. This, I, it all stops here. I, 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 I'm not going to grow anymore. No, with God, it's not impossible. Hope, hope. Mary was filled with hope. And lastly, it was this, if you're taking notes. Do I believe great things will happen in my life, through my life, for others around me? Do I believe that if I obey God, great things will happen. Do I? Do we? Do I really believe if I obey God, great things will take place? This isn't about uh, if, I, if I do what God wants me to do, then I'm going to get a lot of cool stuff. No. It doesn't mean that if I will... will, will will follow in accord and check the boxes that everything will be so smooth and flawless for me. No. No. Our obedience to God is our allegiance and alignment to Him. And we believe that as we follow Him and Him alone, that we, we are, we are, we're surrendered to the fact that whatever comes or goes in this life, it's all in his hands. And we know, we know, as, as the scriptures say, we know that God works everything together for what? Good. For those who what? Love him. And are called according to his purpose. So everything, everything, I mean everything, even the thing that you're thinking about, that you think that thing is a, has a, is a lost cause. No, God can even use that. Even that, th that, that point of pain and difficulty and loss in your life, even that. If we obey God, God will bring about such good in our lives and through our lives. This is Mary, and this is you and me if we obey him. Wrong side of the tracks doesn't matter. Not, not from an, an elite uh, family uh, lineage doesn't matter. Don't have a whole lot of material goods doesn't matter. 
They don't, don't have all the, the new fancy gadgets. Doesn't matter. All the disappointments that anybody could handle. Doesn't matter. When someone says, here I am. Here I am. Whatever you say, God, that's what I want. That's Mary. And that's what God wants from you and me too. Whatever you want, God, here I am. Whatever you want to do, God, in my life, you do it. Wherever you want to lead me, you lead me. Whatever you want to say through my life, you say it. Those things that, that might be in our lives that we've, we've suppressed because we don't want to think about it, talk about it, deal with it. God's saying, if you'll let me and you obey me, I want to use that to make a difference in countless lives. Because good things, great things come through obeying God. Mary obeyed God, and she gave birth to your and my Savior. Your and my Savior. And it was all about her devotion and obedience to the Father. Nothing else. Because there's nothing else more important than that. Amen. How Christmas do I believe? Do I believe in hope? Do I believe in hope for everybody, for everything? Do I believe? Stand with me, please. Yeah, bow your heads with me. Luke 138. That's Mary's response. After hearing everything, hearing everything that Gabriel had announced to her, her response is what I just said a moment ago. I'm the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. The beginning of Advent is there is hope for every person. There is hope for every situation. And it's not by what we know. It's not by what we have. It's not from, by what we, where we come from. Hope is always and forever will be from God, through God, by God. And when he gives us hope, he doesn't just give it to you and me for us to have. He gives us hope for himself. If you recognize a need in your life today, of hope. And I'm speaking about the journey we've just had for the last few, few moments. That you need to know that there is hope for you, yourself, your family. And that you want to be certain that you have such a belief and acceptance of there is hope for me right where I am what's going on in my life, what, I, what I've dealt with in my past, what I'm dealing with in my present, I believe there is hope for me because of what God has done. If you want a renewal of that, a re accepting the, the reminder through God's word that's been given today, would you just raise your hand? I need fresh hope today. 
raising a hand is just a physical acknowledgement. It is of your heart. I, I, I want to know hope. I want to believe in hope. I want to live in hope. And the other question of significance here is, do I believe it's possible? I acknowledge that I need it and I want it, but is it possible for me? Is hope really possible for me? Eternal hope, is it really possible for me? I've been disappointed so much. I've been a disappointment so much. Is it possible? And by raising your other hand, that means you would have both hands raised. You're saying, I need hope that comes from God, and I, I need his help to believe it's possible for me, and it's possible for my family. It's possible for any person, any family. So I raise my hands. My hands with palms raised. It's, it's saying here, I'm, I'm releasing myself to you on this first Sunday of Advent. I, I'm, I'm, re I'm releasing myself, but I'm also receiving what you're offering, God. Offering hope that I cannot conjure up myself. I believe that it's, it's possible because your word tells me nothing, nothing is impossible with you, God. So not only do I know I need and recognize I need the hope of God that comes through Christ, I want to know with belief that this is possible. That no matter who I am or who I was, Nothing is impossible for God. And as we yield ourselves to, to the Father and we receive from Him, we want to take a moment and say, God, just like Mary, just like any, everyone that says, I'm going to obey, here I am, God. You've given me hope. I believe because nothing, Lord, is impossible with you. I seek on this first Sunday of Advent, on this Sunday of hope, I say, here I am. Use me. Whatever, God, you want to do with me, I choose to obey. I choose to obey. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We praise your name with all of our heart. The lighting of this candle of hope, it's so significant. It's, it's where the journey begins. So, Lord, lead us Lead us with this hope, which it is a capital H, because it stands for Jesus. Lead us on this journey as we, as we really seek to settle it completely and totally in our hearts and our lives, that our minds, our thinking is being, being transformed so that we can answer the question, Christmas, do I believe? It's going to be, it's going to be a resounding yes, absolutely yes. Because I have hope. I have hope. Undeserved hope. Undeserved confidence in hope. I want to obey because I want to live in hope and live so much so in hope 
that it is overflowing out of me. Oh, I want to obey so much so that the hope that lives in me makes a difference outside of me. It's in your precious and holy and matchless name we pray all together today. Everyone said amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Tell you what. Hey, Brandon, bring it down, please. And sing this with me. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord sing it again oh come let us adore him oh come let us adore him oh come let us adore him Christ the Lord amen God bless you you're dismissed to be hope out there. Have a great week.